It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. Last week, an Israeli investigative TV show called Ufta revealed that the private intelligence firm Black Cube was hired in 2014 by Israeli billionaire Idan Ofer to smear Israel's then finance minister, Yair Lapid. This is only the latest revelation about the covert actions that Black Cube has been undertaking. The company is also known to offer corporate espionage by using techniques that the Israeli Mossad and other security agencies have perfected. The company became famous when it was discovered that movie producer Harvey Weinstein had hired Black Cube to spy on women who filed complaints against him for sexual assault. Weinstein allegedly received the recommendation for contracting Black Cube from former Israeli Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Ehud Barak. Weinstein apparently believed that former Mossad agents would be able to get him off the hook for sexual harassment, assault, and rape allegations. Here's what the well-known journalist Ilana Dayan had to say about Black Cube when introducing last week's broadcast of the Ufda documentary. Behind a heavy locked door, a high-tech environment, and also the salary and benefits of the group of brilliant people who sit there. Some of them are graduates of the Mossad and other classified units. But the product which they are producing can be dark and much more dangerous than what they imagine. They are called Black Cube, and their official goal is to provide business intelligence. What really lies behind these words we are exposing here this evening for the first time. What made this report so shocking for Israelis was not the methods of deception, sting operations, and surveillance that Black Cube uses, but rather that Black Cube has no qualms about taking on Israeli targets as well, including activists, journalists, state officials, and politicians. Everything is possible for the highest bidder. Black Cube responded to the report with fury and launched a lawsuit for over 15 million British pounds against the show Ufda. Joining me now to look at the latest revelations of Black Cube's activities is Sheer Hever. Sheer is a correspondent for the Real News Network living in Heidelberg, Germany, and his most recent book is The Privatization of Israeli Security, published in 2017 by Pluto Press. Thanks for being here again, Sheer. Thanks for having me, Greg. So Black Cube was founded in 2010 and gradually became famous alongside other Israeli private intelligence companies such as NSO and Psy Group. What did the UVA documentary focus on, and why did, it fo why did it focus on Black Cube, and why now? Well, UVDA uh, now finished their 25th um, season, and this was a, a very big deal for them to do this uh, very in-depth um, investigative journalism work on Black Cube. Uh, I think for the journalists working in UVDA, for Ilana Dayan and the others, the fact that this company is using these methodologies where they use sting operations, where they use surveillance uh, um, and, and deception. They, they track their targets to know what is important for them on an emotional and personal level and then create fake characters that promote those ideas or those ideologies in order to win their trust. All of that is not a problem because uh, this is a, these are journalists that uh, consider this kind of work to be completely normal when it's done by the Israeli security organizations in order to uh, entrap Palestinians or agents of, of other countries and so on. However, when it's a private company which is doing it for profit, and when the targets are also Israeli targets, then there is a sense of fear. And I think that's the reason that uh, uh, Uvda has decided to focus on Black Cube. And I think this sense of fear that, in fact, uh, the very methods that have been used by Israeli authorities and Israeli agencies in order to control Palestinians under occupation, in order to eliminate possible critical voices, are now being used internally by certain Israeli billionaires against others and against politicians and, uh, and so on, is something uh, that... Uh, makes Israelis lose faith in their security agencies. That's why they're so afraid. And I think that's also why members of Black Cube them, uh, itself, people working for the company, uh, either directly or indirectly, have come forward and agreed to speak with uh, uh, the journalists from Uvda. Now, industrial or corporate esp espionage is not a new phenomenon. But it does seem that Black Cube seems to get contracts with the worst kinds of customers, such as Kavila in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Harvey Weinstein, and others like that. Now, other Israeli companies like NSO took contracts from Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Why do Israeli companies seem to have fewer scruples than companies from other countries? Well, I think uh, 
it's a, it's a circumstance that we have to understand how this came to be, because it would be wrong to say that uh, Israelis, just by their upbringing or just by their, their culture, are more willing to cross moral lines. That's not the case. Uh, what is the case, however, is that uh, the Israeli security organizations are in a state of crisis. And uh, the generals, the commander, the, the chief agents of Mossad and other uh, security institutions are facing a daily struggle to keep Palestinian resistance under control, and they're failing. And because they're failing, they're losing public support and, and uh, public legitimacy, and so they're turning to the private sector. And I think what we see with these companies like Black Cube and NSO and Psy Group is that these companies reek of desperation. They take these contracts, which are very problematic contracts, because nobody else will. And I think it's also interesting and very telling that if you look at the cases, all, all these scandals that were now uh, shown by Ufda, uh, you can you can of course look at the case of Harvey Weinstein, Kabila, Joseph Kabila of, of the Democratic Republic of Congo is no longer in power. Weinstein did not get off the hook, and and other uh, people who hired Black Cube were not able to use that information that uh, that they got this blackmail uh, material in order to get off whatever accusations they were facing. And that shows that the companies are also not very successful. So they're trying to build on their reputation as former Mossad agents or agents of other Israeli security agencies, trying to say, uh, we are the best uh, spies in the world because we worked for the Israeli Mossad um, in order to make money, in order to survive in a, in a world that just doesn't have a place for them anymore because the world doesn't really need uh, these uh, apartheid officers who are trained at uh, humiliating people and controlling them. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that is the reason that these companies are, are taking these very, very notorious uh, contracts with notorious customers, uh, and also the reason that they're not very successful in, in providing a, a good service to their customers. Now, officially, intelligence companies are subject to state regulation normally. Has regulation failed in the case of Black Cube? And if so, why? I think um, this is something that we see not just in Israel. We've seen this even more strongly in the United States. Uh, and uh, the Washington Post and other um, newspapers have discovered that when the United States started to uh, privatize intelligence as a mo one of the most extreme, extreme cases of privatization of security, uh, the intelligence officers in the private market, who are all former state employees or former state intelligence agents now working for the private sector, they double their salaries or increase them even more than, than twofold. Uh, and they control access to sensitive government data. And they have an incentive not to share their information with state institutions, because by controlling this information, they leverage their, their power as a private company uh, to, towards the state, toward the government. So the result of privatization of security is a snowball effect. It makes the private sector stronger and stronger. And at some point, it's no longer possible to regulate it uh, because these companies now have more control over a state's intelligence capabilities than the state intelligence uh, officers themselves. The best intelligence agents or the most intelligent ones, the, the best educated ones, the ones with the most experience, have already left the uh, government service and moved on to, to the private sector. And this is something that happened first in the United States. And in Israel, I think the government was very naive to think that it won't happen in Israel because the Israeli generals are loyal and patriotic and Zionist. And that's simply not true. Uh, th as soon as they came into the private sector, they started to operate as people do operate in the private sector for a company, for profit, maximizing their income, maxim maximizing their profit, and gradually crossing one line after the other in trying to get another contract and another contract, even for dictators like Joseph Kabila uh, or uh, sexual predators like Harvey Weinstein. And uh, this shows, and, and also against Israeli officials, against Israeli politicians. And I think that's something that everyone has to be aware of, that uh, uh, governments who are willing to uh, relinquish control over security and surveillance to the private sector are opening a Pandora box. And this can lead to very devastating effects. Now, finally, what would you say can governments learn from this um, when private security companies get out of hand like this? What can be done? 
Well, at this stage, when the, the horses are already uh, left the stable, uh, then the governments are in a, in a very difficult, uh, the government is in a very difficult situation. The, the one thing a government can do in this situation is, first of all, close down the company uh, and, uh, and remove uh, all of its uh, um, licensing. Uh, right now, the Israeli Ministry of Defense gives Black Cube a license to operate uh, while while also declaring that they're officially not co- to be considered a military company. O- although what they do is really uh, sometimes crossing the line into military activity. Uh, so I think uh, the Ministry of Defense uh, in Israel and, and, and any country should be very, very careful about what kind of uh, freedom uh, such private companies receive. And I think it's also very important uh, that uh, people will have access to transparency and the victims of companies like that. You know, uh, if we look at, the, at this uh, documentary about Black Cube, Black Cube has targeted a very long list of people who were lied to, deceived by the company, approached by fake agents and so on. And only when this documentary show, Uvda, started to investigate it, they reached out to these people and told them that the person that they spoke to was actually a spy and they didn't even know. And I think that's the government responsibility to give that information to the victims, to track those cases and to inform people that they have a claim uh, and and their privacy has been violated and that if they want to file a lawsuit, for example, they should. And it uh, it shouldn't be only up to journalists who, who may stumble upon this case and maybe not. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there for now. I'm speaking to Shir Hever, Real News Network correspondent in Heidelberg, Germany. Thanks again for joining us today, Shir. Thank you, Greg. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.